Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast, where industry leaders share their insights. It's five questions in about nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Let's get to it. Brian, tell us who you are and what do you do? Hi, I'm uh, Brian. I'm Brian Cavanaugh, Cybersecurity Operations Manager. And uh, I work for uh, a pensions company, but predominantly uh, looking after a security operations team. But everything related and inside and outside of security operations. So whether that's security controls, uh, compliance, and uh, helping out with other teams, such as information security, and making sure that we're making the organization as secure as possible, really. That's a quick run through of me and who I am and what I do. Perfect. I'm going to ask a, a curveball question right out of the gate because I'm super curious. If you know the answer, is there a difference between running an operations center, a security operations center, or a SOC in the UK versus in the US? Um, from what I know of um, colleagues in the US, um, I don't know that there's much of a difference. I think uh, depending on the size of the organization, and I guess it's the industry that you are working in, um, I think from, um, it may be the exposure to those tools, but again, I, I think um, lots of organizations use some of the big vendors these days for security operations. So um, there may be some follow the sun type of operations that bigger organizations work for i'm fortunate enough that actually i i don't so um so yeah so i'm not working at three o'clock in the morning unless obviously there's something you know really uh malicious happens for example or there's alerts but as far as i'm aware i'm, I'm fairly sure they'd be pretty similar perfect and i didn't mean to put you on the spot but i'm always curious we talk a lot about global global cyber security and, and a lot of our vendors that are out there are, are, are global. And so whenever I have a chance to talk to somebody who doesn't sit next to me, right, whether it's in country, even in a state, I like to just kind of hear what they're doing. And so I appreciate you kind of giving me that feedback. And that kind of lends itself to the next question then. Why do you love being a cyber professional? Um, because no two days are the same. Um, I absolutely love the variety. Um, and whether that's kind of dealing with anything from an incident, but also um, whether that's looking at new technology and, and tools and the level of sophistication of, of some of the professionals out there as, as well as the malicious actors um, and some of the way that they can get into organizations um, still blows my mind today, you know, when you read up some threat intelligence stuff or whether you're listening to Jack Resider on, the, you know, the Darknet Diaries, it uh, just absolutely blows me away. So I think from that perspective, it's... Um, yeah, just fascinating and no two days are the same. Love it. We talk about cybersecurity as a top concern. What does that mean to you? I think if you go back maybe only as far as 20 years ago, it probably wasn't um, a priority uh, for many organizations. And I think it's difficult uh, for smaller organizations as well. It's not something that's tangible. It's not a a piece of kit. It's not necessarily always something that's going to necessarily adds your kind of return on investment for profit margins for organizations. But these days with, you know, cyber threats, there's always something in the news daily, isn't there? So from these big organizations. And, and I think that um, as an organization, there's not only reputational damage, but obviously um, depending on where you are and whether that's a, a GDPR fine in Europe or whether that's a uh, HIPAA fine or something in the US, for example, um, as well as losing customers. So it's going to be a top concern. And you look at anything these days from nation state actors, um, potentially what could be affecting your organization with ransomware, which is now kind of evolved a little bit into extortion as well. So um, it's not going away. And, um, and I don't know what it's like over there in the US, but you know, roles over here are just not being filled. And you hear all these crazy stats around uh, unfilled places, really, in the cybersecurity roles and the shortage across the globe. So I think it's just only going to get bigger. No, and that's and that's a really good point. What insight do you want to share with our network of cyber professionals? Well, I think you can always glean and gain information from others. Um, so I try to do that. I try to take the best from others as well. Um, and I think that uh, you're not always going to be the smartest person in the room. So um, and more often than not, I'm not. So it's kind of trying to, to gain that knowledge from other people. And I think I've seen 
really some fantastic stuff on social media around uh, collaboration and people sharing articles and um, their insights as well, which is really great. Um, and I've also seen some negativity, and, and I think it's a bit unfair, but I, I think some people um, that have bigger profiles on, say, Twitter seem to be kind of trolled a little bit. And, and I kind of want to emphasize that I think we should be more inclusive and I think we should champion and support each other more rather than being kind of negative or shooting each other down. If that's kind of um, your bag, then I, I don't really support that. And I think going further than that, we should really try to be encouraging and welcoming to beginners and new people. We all started out with zero knowledge at some point. So I think the more that we can do that, and the more that we can project that, the more we'll encourage those people and we'll, we'll reduce those um, the numbers of uh, kind of vacancies, so to speak. So, Brian, I want to I want to tag a question on here because I think it's important to what you just spoke about. We all agree that we're trying to make things inclusive, really, really just bring new people in and 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 learn from each other. But there are egos in cybersecurity. How do you think we should deal with those egos? Personally, I try not to pay too much attention to, to egos, um, specifically, you know, on, on the social media platforms. From what I see, most people are collaborative and share and are polite and pleasant and will help each other. So I don't see it too much. I'm sure other people experience it much more. I think the main thing would be not really pay too much attention to it. If there are egos, then they're not. It, that may be down to a number of reasons. That may be down to their own insecurities, may be down to their own experiences. But I think if we can lead by example and uh, share and collaborate with others, I think that's probably the best way. Nice. It sounds like you'd be a great mentor for some of the new folks. So we appreciate that. Thank you. So let's get to the fun question. Favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile? Um, oh, so I kind of want to be a bit cheeky and, and give you two answers, if that's okay. Please. Uh, so, so the the first one really for me is that the first game console that I fell in love with was was the Game Gear, uh, and I had Sonic the Hedgehog, and I completed it. I got it on Christmas Day, completed it by Boxing Day, but kind of went through and, and did it all again anyway. So uh, that was my kind of first game uh, and the first love really for for something that was mine that I could just be glued to. Um, and the second piece, and, I, and I, again, you know, from your side of the pond. I don't know um, whether you really um, did this, but it's very common for my age group to record the UK top 40 on a Sunday afternoon with a TDK 90 tape or something like that and to record the charts and then go and listen to that during the week. Uh, so that kind of makes me smile as well as kind of a bit of retro. You know, my children don't know necessarily what a CD is these days, let alone what a cassette tape is. <laughs> I'm with you. I remember sitting there trying to hit pause so I wouldn't hear the DJ's voice and it was yeah. great. <laughs> That's awesome. Brian, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Well, thank you for inviting me. You did it. You made it to the end. Check us out for future podcasts and more content.